To say that I'm a fan of what Insta360 has been doing with their cameras within the last few generations is an understatement at best, because what they've been doing is providing us great camera options, great optics, great uh, software and stabilization that we've wanted in action cameras and outdoor cameras for quite some time, but they are now finally available at an affordable price and in different form factors. We're talking about the X3 and of course the Go3 that we're talking about today, which is by far one of the most versatile action cameras you can get. The reason behind that, once you start looking at it, is the fact that you can actually separate the camera from the actual base and not only that you can actually use it as a wireless viewfinder for it so not only does it charge it not only does it house it not only does it give it the ability of being more remote but it also provides us the ability of using it like a standard solution as an action camera as a selfie camera and of course so much more even using it as an fpb but i'll show you everything that we can do with the brand new insta360 go 3. this is tk let's check out this little guy and how powerful it is Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So in front of us, we have what Insta360 sent me. This is the Go 3. Uh, this is the tiny, mighty action cam. We'll talk a little bit more about that, of course. And what they also included for me is the mini two-in-one tripod. That was that thing that I was actually holding earlier this uh, in the beginning of the video. And what allows us here is the ability of using this more of a small stand, but it actually is very magnetic, very easy to clamp on, and is absolutely one of the most secure functions that we've seen. But also it extends to become a selfie stick. But we'll talk again about that. Again, mini two-in-one tripod. So in front of us is what we get in the box. Uh, this one's pretty much straightforward. The mini two-in-one tripod is actually a one single piece solution. And it, again, it expands to actually give us the ability of using it like a tripod. There's three legs in here. and But it really benefits the fact that you can actually extend it. You can go all the way to the point where the actual little boom inside kind of just positions itself. It stands up about a two and a half feet tall and gives us the ability of using it in articulating kind of a configuration. We have three different positions to position the actual camera, either, you know, standard 16 by nine or nine by 16, if you want to be able to flip it over more of a, you know, Instagram or kind of a TikTok type of a solution. But it's simple, it's easy, it's small, and it carries very nicely. And of course, marries itself very nicely to the actual camera. The base station has the magnets built into it directly. The moment you just basically get it close, make sure it's in the right orientation, you'll see the camera on it. It actually mounts on it and it is positioned but basically it's already on to actually release it there's two buttons here one on the right one on the left you release it and the camera now becomes portable again but the solution itself is very nice and i feel like this is actually kind of a must-have for this type of camera because it allows us to use it in so many different scenarios we're going to go ahead and talk about the camera in just one second, but we're going to talk about also the accessories that come in the back. There's a USB-C to USB-A charging cable that's going to be able to charge us. There is no power brick, but you just basically be able to connect it to almost anything. It has a single USB-C port on the side, as well as basically a release button. This is what we need to press to be able to release the camera that's also magnetically clamped into this. The actual camera itself has almost all the functionalities that you need as long as you remote connect it to it, and you can actually start recording on it right away. One of the main benefits, of course, is the ability of using it as a viewfinder. So you guys can see me right now. And one of the best benefits, of course, is putting it back in and it charges directly from the dock and it's always ready to go. Now, one thing I didn't get a chance to explain to you is that the top part of the actual stick itself, this piece of it uh, that actually attaches directly into the actual part here is the part that comes with the camera itself that you're able to now actually mount on one, one of these solutions. So they provide us multiple mounting options to be able to use it. There is what I like to call the, call the shirt or the cap. So you can put this on, uh, let's say, a baseball cap or something like that. The camera itself will fit automatically in there. And that's one of the biggest things that they're using here is that they pretty much hold it everywhere with magnets. So you can kind of see it here. It just sits there. It's very nice and very simple solution. And you're able to articulate the camera into the position that you want and actually kind of press the button there and it starts recording. We'll go ahead and stop it there. But the biggest benefit here, of course, is that you're also able to put it on a table, position it and make it into kind of like a webcam. I wouldn't recommend this putting on top of a display as it is kind of tight, but it definitely does fit very nicely on shirts and caps. And it is more of the that first person view straight from the, our head's point of view, the first person view at that level. Because once we start looking at the uh, necklace one, this one allows us to actually have the FBB more of a chest level. And it also comes with an offset to be able to actually offset the camera angle itself. It is flat, and as you can imagine, as it is with most people, depending on what you have under your shirts and so on, you have the ability of basically leveling it by using this piece, and you can actually put it on, and allows you to actually put the camera on top of that at an angle, so more angled up, angled down, or even angled to the right, and then that allows us to actually put the camera in there. The one thing I will probably say is the, the fit or the secureness that you have with the strong magnet that we have in here, so let's go ahead and put that in there, you can hear it right there, 
that snap. There is no dropping this. This is like literally like I'm, I'm actually pulling on it. This is one of those experiences. The magazines are so strong. This experience does help it, but it definitely makes it a little bit less, um, I'll, place, I'll say secure. So if you're able to go with something a little bit more secure into this form, form factor or even side form factor, depending on the orientation of the video, this is not going to disappoint. So everything that you get in here pretty much gets you ready to go. And again, that base station section here, you could just unscrew that in there, put it on here. And that allows us to actually kind of stick it onto any kind of surface that it becomes non-slip for us. It does come with its own little carrier, very easy and very simple solution. But once you're using it, it is gonna be a lot of fun because it's gonna open up so many options for you to be able to use a first person camera or a camera that's an action camera with you everywhere. Now, before we go too far, as I mentioned to you guys, this is all the information that you have on the back of the case itself or the packaging that allows you to see how the different positioning or the mounting options that you get with the actual rotating arm here, the cap, as well as the shirt and explains everything that comes in the package. There are different configuration that you're able to use with it, but this is one of them. Uh, one of the big things, obviously, light and portable magnetic configuration, and this will stick to other things that magnets will typically stand for or connect to. 2.7K video, this is the resolution of the video that we're able to get, the highest even with stabilization. Hands-free FPV because of the functionality of having it used as a, basically with that necklace attachment that we have. Of course, flow state, uh, you know, stabilization, the ability of getting everything stabilized, even if you are actually slightly tilting. 360 horizon lock, which is really, really nice. And up to five meters of water resistance here. This is definitely very good. And multifunctional action pad, which essentially is that base uh, configuration that we get here that allows us to take the camera out of it. Last but not least, of course, the voice control 2.0 and AI powered editing. That's going to be part of that software solution that we're going to check out. Now, the software solution works with both Android and iOS, and it's pretty much a straightforward experience. All you have to do is download the Insta360 app. It's pretty much kind of like the hub for all their cameras. And then this same exact app that we're able to use if we want to use the X3 or if we want to go use the Go3. Again, keep in mind that the X3 is more of a 360 type of a solution because it has two cameras, one on the front, one on the back. And it offers us a different type of camera experience than what we get with the Go3. The Go3 is more of that personal experience, that thing that kind of just gets you straight on, gets you to use it, and gets you also the ability of actually putting it in different positions. And one of the benefits of the Go 3 is the ability of using it more of a standalone stationary camera. The ability of using the main base experience, meaning taking the camera out of the base station and positioning it anywhere you want makes it so much more functional. And it keeps us in the position where we're able to see what we're doing. This is the biggest thing that I love about this. The ability of seeing a viewfind type of a solution. Now that was that little clip that I make, made a mistake and I clipped it there. And I'll go ahead and let the uh, video focus. And one of the experiences that we get there is the ability of actually going in there, editing and customizing our experience. You can go in there, open up a video, and I've been using this with a lot of my, uh, basically my bike videos, of course, the way I've been using them in the past. And then we're able to jump in here, customize, trim, uh, add music, volume, uh, speed up the video, and do other different customizations in there, even stabilize video, and then of course, export it so that you can actually use it. The nice thing about this is if you just want the raw footage from the camera, connect it over the USB-C to your PC and it'll definitely connect as in basically mass storage and download your content straight from it. Mine has, I think it's 64 gigabytes of uh, storage. There are other options that are available. I do recommend going with slightly higher storage because you are going to need to offload things depending on how much fun you're having with it. For me, I'll, I'll probably say this much. You can definitely see I've taken a lot of video with this. I've taken it out quite a bit. I even used it on, <laughs> this is uh, this is gonna be one of those really things. I used it in one of my videos when I was doing that uh, the smart vacuum uh, review. And that allows me to actually give me a first person view of the vacuum as it's going back into the dock. Uh, as it's going around the house, uh, even harassing some of my cats in there. Um, and I even used it when I was trying to demo one of my experiences using uh, basically the Xiaomi, uh, this little tracker, the Xiaomi uh, smart tracker that they have. And I'll give it a second there. So I was using it there. Uh, it's going to buffer a little bit. But the main benefit here is that that position that I had down at this level could not have been done correctly without having the ability of seeing what I was doing at, as I'm standing on the floor. So overall, it's very, very nice. This was actually on a boat. So uh, all the experiences that you get in here, you can download the videos, share them directly. Uh, you can obviously go into your album. I'll go ahead and give it a second here. Then it gives you access to be able to do a whole bunch of stuff. Edit, and you can go in there, update the software, customize it. Uh, and of course, if you have any configurations that you need to do. Very nice and very simple. And it truly is very intuitive. And when I, one of the things I really, really like, let's go ahead and close here, is the ability of getting some of these templates that we get to see from Insta360 that allows us to actually do some special edition functions directly in here. Like these are X3 videos that you're able to do, like the small world functionality that we've seen before. Very nice and simple. And of course, it just gives us a whole bunch of different optional things that we can do.
But at its core, this camera provides us the ability of being outdoors, being in the moment without ever having to worry about it. You don't have to hold the camera. You don't have to even bring the base station with you. If you do need to charge it, unfortunately, that's about the only way to charge it. There is no USB connector on this at all. You'll notice there's basically just the magnetic connectors and, of course, the pins on the side. But otherwise, for the most part, it is actually going to stay in here. Uh, the camera itself does position depending on how you're looking at it. So let's go ahead and turn on the camera. You'll see it right there. Let's go ahead and turn on and I'm going to flip it over. That's one of the other things I really like about it. There is no memory card expansion. This is again all in one solution. I'll go ahead and let over, uh, change the orientation. Swiping from the left gives us the option of changing between intervals, uh, starlight, of course. We have uh, loop recording. We have slow motion. Go back here, time shift, time lapse, and of course, uh, free frame video and video and photography mode options. Now, as I mentioned to you guys, 2.7K is going to be the maximum resolution. If I swipe all the way from the right, from the left side, that takes us into the preview, but I think that one right now is not available. Swiping from the uh, right side, that was the left, we have the ability of jumping between uh, Vivid, the different uh, video options that we get in here. We also have the ability of swiping down. We have options to turn on you know, the speaker, locking it, uh, and of course, just turning on the voice control if you want to be able to use that. And uh, the ability of swiping one more time here, the ability of turning on the grid size, and configurations into the settings tab itself. So you can go in there, change all the different options that you want on the camera, or you can do a lot of that stuff as well directly from the actual app. Uh, last but not least, if you swipe from the bottom, the ability of changing the video resolution 2.7K at the frame rate that you want. So 30 frames per second, roughly, uh, I think that's the maximum at that level. At 1440p, you're able to go to 50 frames. At 1080p, I think if I'm not mistaken, we're able to go even, uh, Actually, that I take that back. At 16 by 9, I think that's pretty much what we're able to do here. I think that's the biggest difference. You're able to change the resolution by nine, by 16, 16 by 9, and of course, the stabilization level, how high you want to be able to do that. Once you're done, set it down, take the camera out. And as you can see, the preview does not stop. I can actually make it actually look at itself. So here's the camera itself. Let's go ahead and let it focus. And you can definitely see exactly how it is. I mean, I'm holding the camera itself here. We'll bring it back into frame so you guys could see me and you can actually see me and I can record a video. I can do everything I want. And when I'm done, just put the camera back in the base station, close it up. And if I want to use it with the actual, uh, you know, the, the smart boom or the two in one boom that they gave us, it's as easy as putting it on and using it and going outdoors. I think that's the biggest benefit that I have with the 360. Well, with the Go 3. Over the X3, the X3 is pretty much more of a camera that captures everything. You put it in a position and it'll capture 360 degree video and you're able to go in and customize some other things. From there, you're able to jump into a, you know, a 16 by 9 or a 9 by 16 type of video. But the cameras are using more of a fisheye lens because essentially it's a more of a spherical lens to allow you to do almost like that 180 on one side and 180 on the other side. And that gives you that 360 video from there. So you're getting two cameras in one on the X3. Where the Go 3 becomes a little bit more personal is because of that, you know, again, that B-roll camera, uh, that FPV camera, that camera that's in there, but you just don't need to worry about it. When I was doing my bike ride, uh, you know, my bike testing and I go outside and I do everything, the biggest thing that I've always had was videos directly from the X3. And the X3 gives me everything more of an environmental thing. But how do I show people my view of the world as I'm going through this? Again, you're able to wear this directly with a cap or the way I used it most of the time, I used it with the necklace style because it ended up being closer to where the mechanics and the uh, electronics are on the bike. So for that solution, it worked great. One of the other really, really nice things I loved about it is when I was out and about shooting some of my video, because this is magnetic, because this is so small, it's easy to actually even uh, connect it to, let's say, a, a light pole or something that magnetically uh, options that you're able to put magnets on. And it became more of a B-roll camera where I was able to actually position it in areas and actually go away. So that made it really more functional for me in the sense of how many different options I can use this with. Uh, the cap weight worked really nice, but again, I felt like it was sitting more in front of me. It depends on what you're doing. If you're going, you know, climbing outdoors, doing more hands-on, and you want that ex exact first-person view straight from your face, I think that really does the solution very well. If you want to be able to position it somewhere and just make it more of a B-roll camera, it works really good. I feel like that the optional, uh, again, accessory that you're able to get, not only does it work because it extends to the level that you want, it has a nice little tripod on it so we can actually position it, use it in that sense. And the audio from this was actually surprisingly very well. We're going to do a quick sample right now. I'm going to record a clip for you right now using the Insta360 GO 3, just to show you guys how well the audio and the video look like, even in an environment like this where it's well lit. 
So this is a quick sample, again, in the office. I'm gonna show you guys a lot more B-roll using it outdoors um, and of course recording some of my reviews. And the biggest thing that we'll say here is overall the performance that you get from here should be very comparable to some of the other action cams that you're getting on the market with the exception of that extra flexibility. You cannot take the main sensor out. You cannot use the base station the way we can use it here. And one of the biggest functions that we get in here is the solutions that we get within the app. The level of editing, customization, uh, stabilization that we get from this camera are crazy good. All the footage that I show you guys where I'm riding the bike, imagine how much bouncing the bike usually has riding on a surface, even if I'm going off-roading. This camera handled not only that, that level of uh, bouncing, but also the ability of making it look like it was actually shot on a stabilized uh, gimbal, which essentially this does have software combination and of course optical that gives us the ability of getting that best camera experience. So if you're looking for an action camera that just does a little bit more than what some of the other options that we have on the market, I feel like the Go 3 is definitely the nice upgrade that we've seen that we've been waiting for from Insta360. This is not a first generation. We've seen, of course, two generations before. But what I love about this is they kept the small size. They gave us a functional base that not only does everything that we want, but it charges the actual camera when we don't need it. And it keeps it as an actual nice little uh, container. Um, so I'll say overall, everything has been really, really good. And I'll say there's a couple of things that I probably would have loved to see. Uh, first and foremost, I probably would have loved to see maybe an SD card option on the base station. Being that we have a somewhat of a dock, maybe the option of offloading some of the content from the actual camera to a base station with an SD card. I feel like that that would have been a nice solution, especially because if you're traveling and you don't have the ability of basically connecting it to your phone to download all the content, as it's connected over Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, Bluetooth for, connect for initializing and then Wi-Fi to be able to transfer the content, that could take some time. So that would be maybe one of my other options. The other thing is, um, I feel like the design needs a little bit of more, of maybe at least somewhat of a protection over accidental activation. I've traveled with this quite a bit and they don't include a case like the way they include it for the X3. The X3 does have a nice little case on it. What I would recommend maybe you purchasing something on your own is the ability of something to protect the little button on this side. I've had it quite a bit of times where I've had it in my backpack and by the time I find the camera, it not only activated because it touched this, depending on what's inside the backpack, but it actually starts recording things. So it's something to keep in mind when you're storing it away. I've learned obviously to do better now. I actually don't just put it straight in my backpack. I actually make sure that there's something around it that protects the button so that there's nothing that pushes it on. Um, and of course, maybe some kind of a, a protection overall for, for the actual camera. But at the end of the day, it is such a small, functional, powerful camera that it, you know, the benefits outweigh any kind of concerns that I may have had with this. And I still recommend this to anybody looking for an action camera that just does more. This is TK. Thank you very much for the support. I'll see you in the next video.